the way that um, the, 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 the real things were uh, the, sh- the shaders on the aliens were you know the next generation of shaders and that really improved the realism and made that a really really efficient process so that was something that came out of the show the other thing was the um, and a, a lot of R&D had been done on the couple of shows before on that but now it became much more plug and play on Cowboys to, to really utilize all the effort that had been made the, the other thing was just that all of the, the physical simulation work that was done with gold that we were able to have a molten metal travel across the surface of, of, a, of you know, the, the actual physical simulation of that and Raoul and Essig and, and, and Dan Pearson were able to take the physical sim, you know, technology, and just introduce some other elements to it to allow us to do that. And the really big hit for us was the explosion stuff. I mean, that was enormous. I mean, the the, exp- the simulation of the explosion there that um, uh, Lee Huron did at the end of that movie. I mean, it's huge. And a lot of that came out of stuff that was started on Avatar and the idea of the you know the thermodynamics of these these huge huge explosions so there were three or four really strong areas and and the fact that plume had also been developed meant that we could just add so much extra stuff in at relatively low overhead for us so you know as the speed of travel or the you know the the the, the, the level of interaction and the secondary elements the dust the smoke the the little fires, that all of that stuff was just incredible. And then I think the other thing was just the um, uh, the Digimat work is is so much more integrated than I mean it's not map digital map work in the sense that you're not painting 2D things. I mean the, the incredibly complex 3D environments and their their tools are able to keep create these sort of one-off environments that just have an incredible complexity to them and the the division of labor and the way that department works within the rest of the system is so much more efficient than it was, you know, five years ago. Well, the the the, the dialogue between yourself and the you know the guys running the set, the the ads and the dps and the you know the director about what it is that you need to achieve, and if and if you, what I found is that if they actually trust your judgment, the whole process is so much easier. If they are looking at you going, why is he, you know, why is he asking for this? Then, you know, all of that kind of trust falls away. And the truth is, they don't completely understand why you're asking for something. Um, but at the same time, you know, that's not a, an excuse to just ask for a bunch of stuff that you may or may not need. So it's a, it's just a balancing act, and it's one that I don't think anyone finds very easy because more often there are always times on shows where they're shooting something, and you go, you know what? I hate to say this, but we need to redo that or do that again. And uh, people don't want to do that. They don't want to hear that. And I totally understand that. And part of the um, the great thing about ILM is that what we've managed to do is just create this incredibly kind of low profile. And we have an amazing group of people in the match move department, you know, with, um, you know, with John Levin and those guys working who are able, I mean the most crucial thing is always to get in the camera data and if you can do that in a, in a very unobtrusive way the machine just keeps moving forward shots keep happening, you're getting camera data okay, what do you need? I, you know, I need lighting references well, at the end of the day they don't mind about that, that's easy you running people running in with spheres or you know, taking pictures or whatever those things are relatively straightforward and if you can keep it, that kind of footprint relatively stealth, you know you're in a great place. Um, it's just when you're doing multiple passes and each pass is complicated. Can I shoot that again without the actors? Let's shoot it again, but without smoke, but turn on the rain. Um, you know, um, And those sorts of things, you're just constantly thinking, okay, I need, and that's where, if you have some experience of doing the work yourself, in other words, you were a compositor or you know, you've composited shots, or you can kind of get a handle on what is the real bare minimum, and maybe what other elements you could go back and photograph and would help you in some way later. But it's a fine, you know, the truth is, you're all, the movie has a budget. You're all taking from the same place. 
Each department has its own budget, but the money's coming from the same place. So that if you, if you upset the process of the first unit or the second unit or whoever, they're spending a lot of money getting those elements for you. So hopefully they're worth it because that, that time spent could be another cool shot in the movie. It could give an actor another chance at doing something again and improve his performance or whatever it is. You know. So are, are you just trying to think as a team player? You know?